Hi, my name is Tom. I am a maritime English teacher at School Ship Gone in Stavanger, Norway. Today we're going to be going into Unit 4B and we're going to be continuing with meteorology. Can you say that word? Meteorology. That's a fancy word for the weather. If you haven't done Unit 4A, I have two videos, uh, exercises 1 to 7, and 1 to 6, and then exercises 7 to 14. Please go and do Unit 4A first before doing this video in 4A. We went in and we learned the words, the vocabulary describing weather. We looked at the different symbols used and, for example, marine charts that come over the marine facts. We looked at the Beaufort scale, among other different scales used for weather. We, we did a lot of things. So go through those two videos, do the exercises. Unit 4B, we're just going to be fine-tuning and using what we've learned, practicing listening. OK, so as always, I have a worksheet you can download. You'll find the link where you found this YouTube video. It's a good idea to have a worksheet in front of you so you can work along as we go through the exercises. As well, if you want to download this PowerPoint, I have a link where you found this video as well so you can use this PowerPoint to study if you have a test maybe coming up. Again, English for Mariners. This is an open source textbook created by Tony Grice, funded by the EU, the Lifelong Learning Program. They also have this fantastic software program, Marang, you can have on your computer. So please download it if you have a chance. All right, let's get going. Well, usually when we start out a new unit, we have these research questions and as usual, here we go. What you're going to do, you've only got three minutes this time, use the internet, a dictionary, hopefully what you already know from Unit 4A, and answer these five questions. The first one, what is a met area? Is it a metrological office? An area of sea? Is it a maritime regulation? Two, what is strongest, a gale or a storm? Three, What's the opposite of clockwise in English? Four, on radar images, which color is heavy rain? Is it white or red? And five, this symbol means a cold front, but what does this symbol mean? Three minutes, go for it. Hey, Stella! I'm going to make him an offer he can't refuse.
What did they tell you? They told me that you had gone totally insane. And uh, that your methods were unsound. Are my methods unsound? I don't see any method at all. Okay, well, I definitely have a method going on here. Okay, let's look at the answers to exercise one. So what is a met area? Well, if you've gone through unit 4A, you'll know that it's an area of sea. When the shipping forecast comes on, BBC 4, about four times a day, they're referring to, and you, you sort of need to know these different met areas in order to understand the broadcast. We're going to look at it again one more time in just a few seconds. But here you have all the different areas around Great Britain extending all the way down Spain and Portugal. Okay, so that's what they're referring to in the shipping forecast. And after you've heard it four times a day for how many years, you, you tend to know what these areas are. So what is strongest, a gale or a storm? Well, again, 4A, if you'd gone through that, we would learn the Beaufort scale. And a storm is stronger, right? A gale is Beaufort force 8. And then 9 is a strong gale, OK? And for my Norwegian students, we talked about gale is almost the same as cooling. If you have Beaufort force 8, Six, that's a leaking cooling. Seven is a steve cooling. And then eight, a gale, is the same thing as a stack cooling. Right? And then nine is a strong gale. Then we get ten, a storm. Eleven, violent storm. And twelve, does anybody remember what twelve is? It is a hurricane. Right. What's the opposite of clockwise? Well, in English, we say clockwise. And the opposite is counterclockwise. So those are two good terms that you could remember and hang on to. On radar images, which color is heavy rain, white or red? Well, here's a picture of Florida. And here you can see, actually, you have red paint, and then it's getting magenta in the middle there. So uh, generally, heavy rain is going to be red. And then on this picture, in case the real intense rain for Florida that you get even turns out to be magenta. OK, this symbol here means a cold front. You find these on, for example, uh, radio facts, uh, marine chart, weather charts. What does this symbol mean? Did you look it up and find it? You'd have to. It means a developing cold front. So it's developing, turning into a cold front. Great. OK, let's go on. So. I just want to go one more time and look at the shipping forecast. This, as I said, is a cultural institution in Britain. It generally comes out on BBC Four, four times a day. They have a very strict format when they broadcast these shipping forecasts. So basically, um, it's almost always presented in the following order. You get the time, the date, and then what sea areas they're referring to, and then a general synopsis. And then comes an area forecast. So what I want you to do is listen one more time. We've heard this. I recorded this on the 15th of February. We're going to listen to it one more time. But now I have it written down here for you so you can read as you listen and see what we're talking about. Because you'll see that they have the date and the time. The time comes first, and then the date, and then the list of areas, sea areas, that there's, in this case, warning of gales. And then a general synopsis time. And then they're talking about the low, yeah, they're talking about the barometer. Uh, moving away northwards, the wind direction, and then low again for northern France, a barometer losing its identity. Okay, And then it will go into well, an area forecast. 
and that comes afterwards. And then they're again doing the name of the sea area, wind direction, speed, sometimes the sea state, precipitation, remember we said that's Nedbe, invisibility. So for example here, area forecast next 24 hours, the name of the sea area, Viking, and then southerly 7 to severe gale 9, that's the wind direction, and then wind speed, and then occasionally storm 10 in north, and then fair is talking about the actual weather, and then good is the visibility. Okay, and then they'll continue for the next year. Take a listen, and hopefully now you'll be able to understand better what's going on in this shipping forecast from Great Britain. Here we go. Philip Avery. Good morning, and now the shipping forecast issued by the Met Office on behalf of the Maritime and Coast Guard Agency at 0505 on Sunday, the 15th of February. There are warnings of gales in Viking, North at Sierra, South at Sierra, Forties, Cromarty, Fisher, Rockall, Malin, Hebrides, Bailey, Ferrall, Faroes, and southeast Iceland. The general synopsis at midnight. Low Iceland 958 moving away northwards. Low northern France 1005 losing its identity. The area forecast for the next 24 hours. Viking southerly 7 to severe gale 9 occasionally storm 10 in north. Fair moderate. North at Sierra, south at Sierra, northeast 40s. Southeastly 7 to severe gale 9. Fair good. Southwest 40s, Cromarty. Southeastly veering southerly, 6 to gale 8. Rain later, moderate. Fourth time, dog. Okay, so now, of course, if you were in Great Britain, you'd know where you're at. It would make a lot more sense. You'd be hearing this all the time. But if you're passing by through the area and you're picking up the weather broadcast, it's a good idea to know what they're talking about. Okay, so we're going to go on to exercise two now, page 73. We looked at symbols before in unit 4A. We're going to do that again. You got one minute. You need to identify these types of weather with these symbols up here. Of course, there's eight different types, but I've got or there's nine different types of weather here. I've got more than nine symbols, so you've got to pick out the right symbol. Use a pencil because I'm not guaranteed you're going to get it right the first time. That's why we're doing this to learn, and we'll give you the answer in one minute. Here we go. You're crazy! This mission is too important for me to allow you to jeopardize it. Okay. So, hopefully you learned a little bit about the symbols last time in Unit 4A. So now we're going to look at them again and see how many of these did you get right. So now, thunder with snow, you can see here, is the sign for th thunder. And so, with rain is a dot over it, with snow an asterisk over it. No precipitation. Nedbe, nothing over it. So that would be the one in the middle there. Moderate rain, so we have rain up here. Light, moderate, and heavy, so it's going to be the three dots. Great. Drizzle has a sign all its own right here. It looks like uh, apost uh, yeah, apostrophe signs. So there is drizzle. Heavy snow, 
You can see again, like rain, we have two, three, and four for heavy, light, moderate, and heavy. So that would be heavy snow here. And now snow showers. Well, here we have rain showers with a dot over, with an asterisk over, snow showers. And then haze. What is haze? Well, in Norwegian, we say dis. And so it's sort of like, a, it's like fog, but a very light, light fog. It obstructs your visibility. So haze has its own symbol here, a shallow fog. Now you'll see they say shallow and deep. In Norwegian we say tun and tuk tokka. You can say that too in English, thin, thick fog, thin fog. But they can say shallow and deep. So there's the sign for shallow. Here you can see for a deep or a heavy, thick fog here as well. And then drizzle. What is drizzle? Well, freezing rain is this sign over here. Drizzle is a dusk rain. So you can have freezing drizzle. It's, it's sort of like a, a very light rain. Okay, So freezing rain is this symbol here with drizzle, a light rain here. And then sleet, hail. There's a little difference between sleet and hail. Hail is like rocks falling down of ice and the sleet is is lighter than that so here's the sign for sleet but they can also say ice pellets here for sleet as well so pellets are going to be smaller than stones which are going to be smaller than rocks hail can be like rocks from in this falling from the sky or stones so sleet is smaller than that okay great so here's exercise three what you're going to do, you have three minutes. You're going to take the symbols that we just learned here, right? Rain and snow and thunder and the rest, and you're going to do a little geography, right? Here is Europe, and you should know, hopefully, these different areas in Europe. If not, use the internet or whatever else you have available, but take these weather conditions with the right symbol and put it in the right place on the map. And again, use a pencil, not guaranteed you're going to get it correct the first time. I will give you the answers in three minutes. Let's do this. Say hello to my new friend! I'm in the dark here! Do you understand? I'm in the dark!
But I can tell you this. He won't sell anybody out to buy his future. And that, my friends, is called integrity. That's called courage. Now that's the stuff leaders should be made of. Okay, a collection of Al Pacino for you there. Right, let's take a look at this now. One, snow showers, and if you remember, we had rain, snow, and then showers, rain showers, snow showers, this symbol here in the English Channel. Well, we have the North Sea. My students should be aware of what the North Sea is, of course, but then between France and Great Britain is the English Channel, very narrow, Calais, and then, yes, there is snow showers. Okay, and then rain and sleet. Well, I was a little confused about that. We have the rain up here, but didn't know if it was light, moderate, or heavy. But then I was thinking sleet means freezing rain, so I chose freezing rain and sleet together. And I put them here in the Atlantic, west of Portugal. So the Atlantic Ocean, Spain, and Portugal on the west coast. Now, if you had rain as well as sleet, yeah, I mean, fine. All right, thick fog. And if you remember these two for light and thick or thin and thick, deep fog, they said as well. Gibraltar, that is a... British territory on the very end of Spain here, right there. Yeah, so thick fog around Gibraltar. Okay, and then light rain in the Bay of Biscay. Do you know where the Bay of Biscay? Well, we know now that we have light rain. Bay of Biscay is here, right, this area here. Hazy conditions in the Mediterranean. Well, we almost all know this is the Mediterranean here. But Algeria, where is Algeria? Tunisia, Libya, Algeria is here. And this is the sign for haze, the symbol for haze. And then we have rain falling as drizzle. Well, it wasn't rain, it was drizzle, which is this symbol here in the Gulf of Bothnia. Well, if you're Swedish, you'd know where that is. It's up here, the Gulf of Bothnia. Okay, and then moderate rain in the Baltic Sea. Well, then we had light rain and then moderate rain in the Baltic Sea, which is here, Östersjön in Norwegian. And then thunder with rain in the east of Iceland. Norwegians, Vikings, you know your brothers in Iceland. So to the east here is thunder with rain. Remember here's rain and snow and no precipitation. So then there you go. There's a symbol there. Great! Let's go on. So now exercises 4, 5, and 6 on page 75 we're going to do all together. First, exercise 4 shouldn't be a problem. Match these numbers on the left with the weather features here on the right, okay? And as you're matching these up, say them out loud or to yourself so that you get the pronunciation right. I will say them for you aloud when we go through the answers. And then exercise six, you're going to put these terms on the right, these weather features, one of each in these gaps, these spaces here, okay? So one more time, match up the numbers here on the left with what they refer to, these weather features, which of these weather features. As you're doing it, say the numbers out loud. And then exercise six, take one of these weather features on the right and put in each of the spaces correctly. Two minutes, let's do this. If your family tree does not fork, <laughs> you might just be a redneck.
If you own a home that is mobile and 14 cars that aren't, you might be a redneck. Okay, no rednecks here, I hope. Right, let's start out with 180 degrees. That refers to wind direction. Okay, and then 75 knots refers to wind speed. We don't have any uh, speed, vessel speed here at all, so it must be wind speed. 23 degrees Celsius, that air temperature, okay? And 1,004.2 millibars is how we say it. And that would be pressure, air pressure. 16 kilometers gives us visibility, okay? Six in the region. Then five octas, I've never heard of that before, refers to cloud cover. And there you go. Here are the different symbols of the different scale in octas. I think that's how you say it. Eight octas. And so five would be half cloudy sky. Okay, learn something new. That is great. And so now we're going to put in these terms in the sentences when the degree. So wind direction, when the wind direction is 180 degrees, it comes from the south. Okay, didn't know that. The symbol here means a wind speed of 75 knots. Okay, the fog is thick and I guess visibility, yeah, is poor. A ridge of high pressure, of pressure, building up to a thousand millibars is moving south. And then air, we've only got one thing left, air temperature is below freezing tonight. Great! Right, now we're going to do some listening. So you need to get a pencil. I would use a pencil just because you might want to change. We're going to listen to two different weather forecasts, the shipping forecasts again. Like I said, these are cultural institutions in Britain. And we're going to write down what we hear. So you need to put the information in the right place place what you hear of the location the time the date and then wind direction pick that out and put it in the right place wind speed it's going to be Beaufort scale the sea state weather and visibility this is not easy here are the different areas that you have sea areas for the Met Office we're going to listen to it three times so go ahead and write down as you hear here we go the Trafalgar shipping forecast at 2400 on Tuesday, the 11th of December. North easterly 4 or 5. Moderate or rough. Showers. Good. Here comes a second time. Here we go. The Trafalgar shipping forecast at 2400 on Tuesday, the 11th of December. North easterly 4 or 5. Moderate or rough. Showers. Good. Okay, we're going to do it one more time. The Trafalgar shipping forecast at 2400 on Tuesday, the 11th of December. North easterly, 4 or 5. Moderate or rough. Showers. Good. Okay, great. And let's go and see if we got it right here. So the location is Trafalgar. And then the time, 2400. Zero, zero say midnight but he said 2400 and then the date the 11th December you can write it out or you could have just put the numbers the wind direction north easterly the wind speed Beaufort scale four or five sea state was moderate or rough sea and then weather showers visibility good okay I know that was not easy so then let's try doing the next one 
weather record two and again you're going to be we're going to listen three times and you need to pick out the right information the location the time the date and then the wind direction wind speed pick out the sea state the weather and the visibility okay here we go first time synopsis at 0800 on the 23rd of March Cromarty. Variable 3 or 4. Becoming south. 5 to 7. Slight or moderate. Occasionally rough. Fair. Good. Okay, that was the first time. Here is the second time. Synopsis at 0800 on the 23rd of March, Cromarty. Variable three or four, becoming south, five to seven. Slight or moderate, occasionally rough, fair, good. All right, and one last time. Synopsis at 0800 on the 23rd of March, Cromarty. Variable 3 or 4, becoming south, 5 to 7. Slight or moderate, occasionally rough, fair, good. Okay, keep in mind this is not easy. They don't tell you location you should just know it from knowing the different areas sea areas here from the Met Office but as well they don't say wind direction winds it just you pick it up you know it after hearing it so many times so it's a good idea that we're doing this in case you do pick up the shipping forecast on the radio you'll know what they're talking about so yes the location is Cromarty up here on the very tip of the UK is Cromarty and then the time was 0800 hours the date 23rd of March you could just write it like that or and wind speed becoming south was the wind was the wind direction and then the wind speed was 3 to 4 becoming 5 to 7 and then the sea state slight or moderate occasionally rough the weather fair and the visibility good great let's go on to the last exercise for today exercise 11 on page 79 we're going to listen again to a radio conversation between the OOW the officer of the watch on the ship morning sky and the Atlantic Weather Center. Now, this is a typical uh, interaction. The Met offices frequently contact ships to get information about the weather at specific locations. It's voluntary. The seafarers send weather updates to the Met office, and this information is used to build up accurate weather pictures in each sea area, as well as identify and track weather movements. So as you listen, you're going to try to, you're not going to try, you're going to answer these questions as best you can. Let's just read them so that you've got them. What does the OOW's first question mean? Does it mean, can you hear me clearly? Have you read my message? Can you see me clearly? Two, which of the following means the same as the Weather Center Center's answer to the first question? So you've got to listen carefully for the Weather Center's first question. Can I hear you perfectly? Can I hear you okay? I can't hear you well. Three, where are icebergs reported? In the North Atlantic, East Atlantic, everywhere in that area too? Four, what does the OO mean when he says, say again? I'm going to repeat what I said. This is important. Please repeat your message. Five, what does the man at the Atlantic Weather Center mean when he says, acknowledge? What does acknowledge mean? Let me no, you understand. Answer me. I have no more information. And six, how does the OOW acknowledge? Thank you. Nothing more. Understood. Southwesterly winds for six. Okay. Let's listen. Atlantic Weather Center. This is morning sky. How do you read? Over. Morning sky. This is Atlantic Weather Center. I read you fair. Go ahead. Over. Question. Are icebergs expected in Met Area 2? Over. 
again. Wind from southwest. Force six. Acknowledge. Over. Atlantic Weather Center. Understood. Southwesterly winds. Force six. Thank you. Nothing more. Out. Great. Now, if you need to listen to that one more time to answer the questions, go ahead and back up the video. We are going to continue on. Here is the actual dialogue written down for you so that we can answer the questions. What does the OOW's first question mean? The first question is, how do you read? And that would be, can you hear me clearly? Right. Which of the following means the same as the Weather Center's answer to the first question? So the Weather Center is voice two here, the Met Officer. His answer is, I read fair, which is moderate. I hear you perfectly. That would be five by five is what you say. I can hear you OK, moderately. OK, good. So I read fair is in between. Where are icebergs reported? And then here we go, the response. Icebergs reported in Eastern North Atlantic Met Area 2. So in the North Atlantic, in the East Atlantic, or everywhere in Met Area 2, it says icebergs reported in Eastern North Atlantic. So it's in the North Atlantic, the Eastern part of the North Atlantic, Eastern part of the North Atlantic in Met Area 2. So not everywhere in Met Area 2, not in the East Atlantic, it's in the North Atlantic. Okay, so for what does the OOW mean when he says, say again? Right, so it says, say again, Atlantic Weather Center, say again over. He means, please repeat your message, which they do. I say again, and they repeat it. And then what does the man at the Atlantic Weather Center mean when he says, acknowledge? Well, he's, he said, acknowledge over. He's saying, did you get that? Let me know you understand. And then how does the OOW acknowledge? He says, understood and repeats what he heard and nothing more and then out. Great! Well, that's it for today. I'm going to be heading into Unit 5 cargo handling next, so stay tuned for that. Bye-bye for now.